Hello everyone. Watch and working to relax. Uh, my name is Kevin, in case you haven't been to the channel before. Um, if you watched my last video, we're putting tires on the camper here. I uh, just came to the other side and noticed something that uh, I need to look into um, a little bit. So I thought I would let you guys see what's going on. So, let's see if we go. Here for a decent view for you guys. What kind of work for you? <clears throat> So something I noticed when I was crawling to the camper to put the jack under the jacket up is the tread here is down to the wear bar, but the tread out here is not. So that means we got something going on here. Either it's an axle issue or a bearing issue. If you can also see, that's why I'm replacing the tires. Three out of these four are probably about seven years old so it's time for them to go so what we're going to do now is hopefully for you guys, we're going to check the bearing and make sure that that the wheel bearing is not the issue so let's see we just need a good spot where it doesn't tip up. Unfortunately, I've driven in this yard too much, so it probably won't cooperate. So, and part of this is also the sum of the process you're going to go through to pack your bearing. So, there it goes. So all we're trying to do is get behind that lip on the dust cap. I don't think I cleaned it out last time I packed the bearings. It looks like I wiped it out, but I didn't get it real clean. So we've got some paper towels here because we're not packing the bearing, we're just checking things out. So I don't want any gravel or dirt or anything like that to get into my bearings. So put that there. It was not really all that tight. That could have been a little tighter. It would have been nice if it had been a little tighter. So, while we're here, I think I'm just going to have to invest in a big crescent wrench, ain't I? It's the biggest one I own. So, that guy in there, wrap it up so it stays clean, set it aside. Well, we know those aren't out of adjustment. So, Spindle looks like it's pretty good. There's no burn marks or real nasty abrasions. The inside of the drum is sort of the same thing. Sometimes if your bearings get hot, which isn't uncommon, you'll get some brown right there. That's where the bearing rides. And this one up here, you can see, only if I point at the camera, this one here you can see is a little dirty right there, but come around this side, it's not as bad. So I mean, so the grease, I mean, it, you know, I probably only packed these bearings twice in the 12 years I've owned the trailer. Um, but again, I don't put a lot of miles on this. So I could probably push it a little bit like I do. But, um, you know, the other thing we want to look for is any cracks. And just so happens there is a couple there. 
So that means right there. So that means the next time I do bearings, I will be doing brake shoes. Oop, get some of that light out of there. Use my size to advantage. So I will be doing um, brake pads as well. Um, I want to say, and I have to check because I don't remember, but I want to say that that crack is actually acceptable because it's in the middle of the pad and that particular crack does not appear to be over two inches long, so that is technically acceptable. If I'm not mistaken, please don't quote me on that. Um, I have to. My, I don't have any of my books here to to confirm that, but I do know that there is a very small tolerance of what you can and can't do, or is allowed, and that sort of thing. Um, and when I do these breaks, I'll probably do is instead of doing the backing plates. And I don't know that it's really that much cheaper to just change the pads and hardware, but I'll probably just do the pads and hardware and keep the backing plates. Um, I don't see a need to replace the magnet. Um, and this is your magnet. So actually, when you step on your brake pedal in your vehicle, um, the wheel is spinning this way, you know, uh, would be uh, clockwise. So you step on the brake pedal, what it does is it pushes that magnet out to the rim and then the rim spinning pulls this back and the more magnetic power you have the harder it'll pull um, and when it does that it actually I don't know if you can see that or not but it pushes the pad out a little bit and the same thing if you're going in reverse you step on your brake there's not as much motion for back but there is some so and um, there is actually grease points inside these that need to be greased. And again, it's been a little while since we've done this on this trailer. But when I did it last, I did grease those. And it's it's just taking the tip of your screwdriver, dipping it in some grease, and wiping it like in areas like, let's see if I can get a good picture. Areas like right here, because that is where this rides. There's a couple of, I think there's like three or four spots in each each uh, uh, backing plate that you do. But um, uh, but I'm not going to deal with uh, packing bearings right now. I am going to adjust the brakes, which you saw in my last video. So, all we're going to do now is put it back together. I think the problem was is that spindle nut was a little too loose. And that caused the wheel to kind of ride a little cockeyed. Um, and then over the course of two years, with all the farting around I've done back and forth to storage and... Like I said, we probably had the camper out maybe five times, an hour drive each way wherever we've gone. Um, you know, it, 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 that, it's taken that long for it to show. So, um, and this year has been back for the storage way more than it's been out camping. It hasn't been out camping once this year. So, <coughs> excuse me, mosquito. So anyways, so I hope this is useful for somebody, anybody looking to kind of diagnose this stuff. Um, let's see if we can put this back together real quick so you can see what I'm going to do to try to fix that problem. Hopefully the phone stays put. To avoid that trouble I had getting it off putting it on, you can actually look at my last video. You can loosen up the brakes and then take it off real easy. So we'll open up our stuff here. Without our bearing, our bearing looks pretty healthy still. No burn marks inside there, so that's wearing pretty well. Um, there's a special nut on these that's got a flat spot, and that's got to fit on a flat flat spot on the um, spindle. And then you got to get your nut on there. Okay, so that's that, and then we got to get our wrench. For whatever the reason, this wrench doesn't fit. You'll have to excuse me for two seconds while I go get another one.
So unfortunately, uh, that is the biggest crescent wrench I own here, and I think the one at work is the same size and it goes bigger. So we're going to have substitute for a pair of channel locks, which will work just as well. Uh, you're not really trying to crank down on it in a sense, but you do want to make sure you can get a good bite on it and not slip off. So you're going to spin the drum and then give a good snug down on the nut. And what that does is it seats that bearing bearings in place. Um, you're only supposed to have to do it once. I always do it a couple times just to make sure I got it good. Um, it's never failed me. You want to make sure you got it off where it's sloppy loose. And then you just turn it. You can't turn it with your fingers anymore. You do not want to put a tool on that at that point. You do not want it tight when you put your keeper pin on um, <clears throat> because you'll burn the bearing out. It'll have too much pressure on it and won't be able to spin and go overheat and burn out. Um, it's not pretty. So once you've got that done, you take your keeper pin and as you can see there's a little flat spot right here with a little tab that lines up here on the flat spot here with this and this will snap right over the nut only because it was on camera did that go on that easy because they don't usually go on usually you have to tap them. but um most rvs the only one i've ever seen that does this keeper is um jayco everybody else has a cotter pin and i don't believe this one is set up for it and i think it's probably because it's got the zerk fitting but I remember Zerk ones that had Zerks that the cotter pin was offset to the side, so you could still shoot a cotter pin through. Make sure it's through and bent back, or you fan it out, or whatever, and that will actually lock that nut in so it can't back out again. So, I think that, I think that that'll, I think that'll take care of that problem, I think. So we'll put the tire, new tires on, and we'll just, I don't know, I'll monitor it, you know, uh, as we use the trailer and stuff, and miles I put on it and everything to see what it looks like. So I hope this video is useful for somebody. Um, if it's not a bearing issue, then I have an axle issue. And looking across the trailer from side to side, the axle has a crown in it still, so it kind of frowns like that, um, which means it still ha it hasn't lost its camber yet. So um, I don't believe we have a camber issue, um, but that doesn't mean you don't. I don't have a bent axle, or not a bent axle, a bent spindle. Um, someday I'll tell you the story about going over a curb because, yep, I went over a curb once, Just once. So, uh, anyways, if you like what I'm doing, like and subscribe. Uh, if you're new to the channel. Leave a comment, ask a question. I don't mind answering questions. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Facebook is just my name, Kevin Baroni. Instagram is working to relax. Um, I don't. I think I'm the only one out there. So, um, meanwhile, I've got. I've showed my work for the day. Um, yeah. Anyways, so everybody be safe. Keep the rubber on the road. Eyes on the road and uh, just focus on the destination ahead, not the troubles you left behind. Have a nice day.